welcome to Edge of Plays podcast. It's number three for us now. Um, I'm joined today by Stuart Montague, uh, level two coach, and myself. That's it. James is actually away. He's uh, been over in Barcelona having a good time, and uh, it'll just be the two of us today. We're going to be talking about rolling subs today, um, and maybe going beyond that as well, and looking at the idea of subs in general, how you can use them effectively, what issues we have as coaches uh, with substitutes, and who you make substitute, and so on. But we thought we'd base it around rolling subs. Rolling subs has uh, become um, a big part of the game at junior level now where it in, ensures that young players get loads more game time and for their development that's really important whereas when we were growing up um, if you were sub you might not get any time at all and if you were on the fringe of the team yeah you'd probably get five minutes at best uh, and even if you're a decent player uh, at what point could you risk putting your final sub on uh, a manager would wait longer so that's been taken away you've got rolling subs uh, across junior levels but at the senior level it's it's still very mixed so you have many leagues still with a three sub limit uh, but you have a number of leagues now around the UK uh, certainly that have um, a rolling subs rule being trialled and it has been getting trial for a number of seasons so we've played in a league that has that and you can use anything up to five subs as many times as you want to uh, so you have 16 players on the card more players get game time uh, some people like this idea some people think it doesn't reflect the pro game and so they hate that because they think it's not reflective of what we're all kind of uh, aspiring to be uh, be like or to get to so we thought we'd discuss that um, Stuart do you want to start off with your first thoughts on rolling subs the first thoughts on rolling subs uh, would be that I understand people's concerns when they say it doesn't reflect what the professional game would be and I think probably that's the the major issue is where where you decide to draw the line between development and competition mm. uh, you know, a level of football where you're just trying to develop players, whether it be uh, children or adults. And so uh, participation is important. Uh, getting as many uh, players on and off the pitch and making sure that you can uh, get lots of development time for them is important. And then obviously you've got the elite level where then even with children, you'd think it becomes something that can be manipulated. It becomes something that can be problematic. Um, and so it's difficult to... It, it's difficult to scale that up to the the top level game I think yeah absolutely I think we'll aim in that direction so what I think would be good to do is we'll go through maybe what we think are the negatives first of all at grassroots what potential negatives there could be with rolling subs then we'll look at the positives um, any that we deem and then it'd be nice to then refer it like we've been trying to do in all our podcasts onto the pro game because at the moment there is no rolling subs in the pro game um, but it's definitely on the table as a possibility. And you can see in pro rugby, for example, it's already the case. So, yeah, let's, let's kind of take that way. So we can maybe even take it in turns or just keep throwing them out there. I put the first one down would be more stoppages. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're going to have rolling subs, you're guaranteed more stoppages. How do you manage that? Because we still have referees, don't we, who obviously, by the letter of the law, are supposed to do this. They come to the halfway line because yeah. they've got no linesmen at some levels. Our Premier Division has linesmen. The next division doesn't, so the referee comes over and has to see the player onto the pitch and record it. Imagine that if you had 20 subs. Yeah. And the referees aren't the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them take a while to go over there. So that that could be one issue, couldn't it, the stoppages? I think so, definitely. And especially if you get the situation where... Um, I think certain, some leagues, I, I know it's not in our league, but some leagues when they've trialled this as well, they do it where it doesn't have to be a stoppage, don't they? Oh, I think, a, I think right, I've yeah. seen in certain like sports... In def yeah, definitely in certain countries... I've seen it where at junior level, uh, it's just come on and come off when you want, and that becomes a huge problem for the mm. for the referee. Uh, but even even with this system, like you were saying, if you all constantly have to stop the stop the game, then it does it does become a very stop start game. And as I said, the more you move towards where competition's important, winning's important, then it starts getting used to break up the flow of the game, to waste time, mm. things like that, which I think could be. It's difficult, it'd be controversial to bring it in, whereas further down the developmental side of the scale, it's a hugely useful tool to get people lots of time on the pitch and yeah. and to increase participation so you know that you can you can take 16, uh, 16 players down and they can, yeah, yeah. they can all get good game time. I mean, so sticking on the stoppages then before going on from there, um, 
the referees would have to have a different rule on that, wouldn't they? Where they'd have to be able to say, you'd have to come to the halfway line, uh, you'd have to have a, a, a card that a referee's like, recording booklet would have to be really clear for him to be able to just do little ticks and not have to write the name of the player yeah. and so on. It'd have to be as quick as you can. It'd have to allow for the fact you might come on and off six, seven times. <laughs> we could have discussed how we've got an idea for that, but at the moment you could literally bring someone on and off as many times as you wanted with the rule, so it could be manipulated like you mentioned. So yeah, admin, I think, for the refs would be important if they haven't got linesmen to help them and then I'd actually put down gamesmanship which is what you referred to there mm-hmm. so how do we think um, coaches could could use this to their advantage well I mean it's an interesting situation where if you're a coach uh, even if you, we say best faith possible you should be you should be changing your your roster for set pieces in theory you should have two special teams players uh, mm-hmm. for corners or for long throw-ins or something like that you could almost on, on every stoppage of play you'd want to bring on certain players bring off certain players and that, that isn't even you wouldn't say that was bad faith you'd say that was actually in good faith they're the rules almost the Sam Allardyce technique to things yeah. like, as soon as there's a rule change Sam Allardyce always used to think how can I game this how can yeah. I get as much as I can possibly get out of this um, so that's sort of the good. I think that's at the good faith end of the scale. Uh, at the at the bad faith end of the scale, you've then got uh, time wasting, breaking up the flow of the game, and just basically turning the end of a football match into a farce. Really, yeah. Yeah, you absolutely could, couldn't you? I think at junior level, you'd like to think that would happen less because, like you said, there's a development end of the scale where that is is not. And this can be another podcast, to be honest. The whole thing of when it when is it result and when is it development driven. But yeah, the youngest kids, you'd hope it wouldn't be an issue. It'd be a case of no, we're just doing a rotation. Everyone gets equal game time. Fantastic. But yeah, as you go up through the levels, I know for a fact in the games we play, there'd be gamesmanship, and we'd be part of that. You'd be like, we're yeah, winning one nil. And we're allowed to do subs. I want to break up their rhythm. Um, yeah, so that that would be a big part of it. And, and in terms of the the specialists, um, hockey have done that for years. I remember. I'm not a massive fan of watching hockey, but in the Olympics, you end up watching it. And I was at the Commonwealth actually. And so you're watching it, and they had a specialist on the you know the penalty corners. Yeah. And that player would come on, do the penalty corner and go off again right. never stayed on to be honest they must have been absolutely terrible at hockey <laughs> appalling they didn't get on for another second it was like right off you come again back on again and you could have that couldn't you could have a long you could have the mountain from Game of Thrones doing in for long throws yeah. put him in the box you could have someone with no ability but yeah he's a big lad get a big basketball player down throw it throw it at his head um, and you could have um, yeah someone who's a sprinter get him on you know do his little thing get him off again because he's got no fitness God, it would be interesting and then for me we, we both like a set piece and so times this year um, we, I play a coach so I'll, on the side coaching and wouldn't bring myself on at that point but if it was to bring myself on a set piece I could come on do a couple of set pieces and come off again and put yeah. someone who's younger and fitter than me yeah. uh, not come, fitter faster come on for penalties um, exactly you come yeah. on for penalties you know and you could have players that have long since retired if they're good at a penalty you could have lads <laughs> coming back in the 60s going oh stick me back on I'll do the pen off for come so yeah we, we, we're going to come up with some ideas on how you could maybe manage that in some ways that'd be nice wouldn't it it'd be nice to think some people could come and have a role still you could be a specialist the problem you've got there though obviously is if the keeper saves it and it's still in play <laughs> get him off as the game goes on <laughs> uh, absolutely no, so we're looking at games which are a bit there then so we're imagining as well yeah, you're winning a game and you could disrupt the flow one idea I had on that one was that uh, if a team are doing that you could have a rule I don't know how easy it is to be but it'd have to be on your own set piece um, so when the ball's going out for your throw your goal kick your free kick that's when you can do your sub at least then if I'm against the team that are trying to do a sub they're not going to stop us taking a quick free kick to do another sub or when it goes out for a throw do a sub every throw in you can imagine that would be infuriating if it's their throw in I suppose they're in control possession anyway mm. um, and I think the whole stopping the watch thing would have to be a big we talked about this in simulation in that podcast but it'd have to, I don't think you could do it as injury time it'd need to almost be if it's that many subs would you not have to stop the watch to do that. It, it feels uh, it feels incompatible with the competition element, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It feels almost as you get to the levels where competition is important, even towards elite level for younger children and things like that, where you are trying to teach them about game management. The the result does matter. Uh, it almost feels incompatible with that to me. I, I, I don't I can't see a way where it's workable. Yeah. I can that's how I felt I, I don't want to creep onto the positives yet but I was I will come on to it shortly that 
It surprised me when we did trial it at the last league we played in. It did surprise me how little that happened, but maybe that was just because we weren't all clued upon it yet. And give it time, yeah, we'll all find ways to manipulate any rule. And that can sound nasty, but at the end of the day, at the level we're playing, we're trying to win games. You, if you, you, you're following the rules still, but you can use them in your favour. Uh, one thing I put down on this as well, is it could fa- you've mentioned this to me actually, favour less fit teams. So if you're a fit side and you know you've got your three subs, that could win you some games. But then yeah. if you could have 16 players and they're not that fit, but every five minutes you're a sub, get a breather, mate, come over and get you know some more Lucas Aid or whatever. We're not getting sponsored by them, by the way, so don't mind dropping their name in, or any energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> Many are available. Yeah, there are loads of them. Um, and we'll mention one if they would like to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can imagine that being frustration, the fitness thing. Yeah, that would, that would be a frustrating thing. I suppose you've, you've then still got the idea of your 16 being fitter than their 16. Yeah. So you're always going to get, if anything, maybe, you know, it... Uh, pushes the incentive to be even fitter I suppose if you've got to compete against lads who are going to keep rotating their 16 all the time um, yeah that's true if anything you, you might end up with uh, the issue of injuries where people are coming on and off and getting cold again and not keeping themselves loose that's, yeah. that's one thing that you probably need to consider as a coach that's a big one isn't it and, yeah. and definitely for older players maybe more than young that yeah you you do all your warm up for a reason so you don't pull a muscle imagine that you've played in the game <clears throat> you come off for 20 minutes or even longer you could come off after half an hour and not come on to the last 10 yeah. you can have that. that's prime time for pulling a muscle really because especially if you come off what do you do do you stretch do you do a warm down then a warm up again I think for older players that would be how the coach managed it because I know I'd find that hard but would you as well I, I know when I come off after a certain, about 10 minutes I start I'm old and I'm a veteran player I start to stiffen up if I'm not careful yeah I think it's tricky as well uh, as, as a coach, you know, um, sometimes your players don't do the most vigorous warm-ups, even when you know they're only going on once and it's going to be in five minutes' time and you yeah. tell them, go and get warm. And you look down the line and it is the least vigorous warm-up you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine trying to keep them at that level, you know, for that 90 minutes where they could come on at any point. Yeah. I think it would be tricky. You'd have to, yeah, you, you would need... It'd become part of our coaching thing would be teaching subs how to warm themselves up because yep. they'd be doing a lot more of it, wouldn't they? Uh, and yeah, maybe even warm down. It, it, I would think, we'll come on to the programme afterwards, I'd think with them it'd be on the bikes, wouldn't they? They'd just be non-stop on the bikes. They'd be like Tour de France-style miles they'd be putting in. They'd never get to rest. They'd be like, you might be coming back on again, get on a bike <laughs> at the side of the pitch. Um, another thing I put, which occurred to me, so let's see if you can guess what I'm going to get at. When we have a friendly match uh, in build up to a, a season, sometimes referees deal with discipline problems differently. So it might be sometimes a red card challenge, and I've seen referees use a certain tactic and say, "Well, if you do this, I won't send him off." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do a sub. Yeah. So if you if you sub him off, uh, then we'll carry on with eleven v eleven, and you kind of like that in a way because you think, "Yeah, I don't want eleven v ten. I want eleven v eleven prep." But I would hate it if it became to this and a referee turned to uh, a coach saying. Uh, sub him off or I'm sending him off yeah. I'd be like no he's just fouled our man through on goal yeah. we want the advantage from that which is by the law of the game to get have the extra man um, and that would drive me mad yeah I think you you've definitely hit on something there because uh, without wanting to damn all referees some referees do take the easy way out you see it a lot of the time when uh, if someone makes a bookable tackle that they've pulled the shirt the ref- but the referee can play an advantage it's like oh thank a lot of them it's like oh well I'm glad I can play the advantage because now I won't book him mm. they don't come back to it they don't come back and sort that out very rarely if they can play on so sometimes yeah you do, they do take the uh, the easiest way out and if that was if that started coming into where they could they could say to players well take him off that was a, that was a bit dodgy take him off yeah that wouldn't be I, I, I think it'd be see how, how weaker re- weaker referees it would creep in you'd like to think with strong referees it wouldn't yeah, definitely. I mean, that links into our sim bin thing as well, because it could be, we talked about in podcast one about the idea of sim bins in football, which some leagues are going to trial as well. And if both things were tried at the same time, it could be the same thing. This last give me a load of descent, get him off for 10 minutes. You know, hang on, ref, that's a sim bin offence. They should be down to 10 yeah. men now. And yeah, they'd have to really, the referee training on that would have to be really thorough, wouldn't it? And on the coaches too, because I, I always try and argue back with the referees as well. It'd be up to the coaches to respect that as well. Uh, and not try and force that. No, ref, we're taking him off <laughs> before before you can book him. <laughs> There'd have to be quite quite harsh punishment for a coach who is putting a player back on the pitch or he's putting 12 players on the pitch, that sort of thing. Anyone who's trying to gain an advantage and make the referee's life more difficult in a very, what, what seems to be more of an admin-heavy job yeah. they're going to have to do. Yeah. It'd very much have to be if you end up with, if you know, if you end up with 
12 players on the pitch or if you bring someone on that should be in a sim bin that's yeah. a red card offence you know you're going to lose a player for that it'd have to be something quite severe wouldn't it so that yeah. referees weren't constantly having to try and stay on top of I know they've got to stay on top of it but you know you, you try not to game the referees too much where someone's been should be in a sim bin for 10 minutes and you brought them on as a sub yeah yeah definitely um you, you mentioned before about in some uh, some levels about the idea of uh, the subs can just be in open play just carry on doing it and that's used in futsal I did my futsal not long ago uh, my course on that and yeah it was amazing it's part of the game is that there's two sub gates and you can enter or exit via, via either of them at any point in the game so a goalkeeper can run off the sub gate another strike can come on and you can actually go super attacking yeah. if you lose possession someone get off the sub gate quick because the keeper can run back on it's thrilling, it's exciting. I thought, would that work? And the reason I think it wouldn't, futsal, you've got 5v5. Yeah, it's Imagine easier. 22 people on the pitch. <laughs> so if, I'm, well, I'm saying this, actually. Let's, uh, there's five aside for juniors, and it goes to seven aside, then nine aside. Is there a, Maybe for five aside, it would work. For sevens and then nines, how is the referee going to monitor that? And you can just imagine someone sprinting on before the last one's gone off and doing a slide yeah. tackle. And what are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> is he going to send him off because he stops? Uh, it, yeah, I think we'd struggle to do that. It'd have to be a stoppage, wouldn't it? In I play. think so. Yeah, uh, we'd definitely manipulate that one. Um, any other negatives you can think of before we kind of look at more at the positive side uh, to rolling subs? Um, I think the main one that we were talking about before is the replication, isn't it? Of the idea that you. You want to think that the the lower levels of football are as closely replicated with the the senior game as possible, don't you? Yeah. So if you've got different sets of laws essentially for the two games, is that is that really what you want? Do you want different laws for different levels? And it's a, it's a difficult one. And also, then, as I said before, the most tricky thing is where you put that line, isn't it? Where do you put that line between right? This is this is a game that we're playing for fun, and this is a game now where it's serious business. You know, it, it's very very difficult. Even in you could talk about an elite football club, mm-hmm. and you could say to them, well, you know, the under fives, the under sevens, even though they they might be elite. I know it's a, I know often overused term, but elite players for their level, they might be elite under sevens, but they're still there for the development. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not competitive, really, or it doesn't have to be. Yeah. So then, at what point after they've done? Is it under nines? Is it under elevens? It's tricky, isn't it? When when do we? When are they getting serious? And it's now. This is no longer usable. Yeah. When is this going to mirror the game? We're all developing to get to, yeah. and and we do love that. I mean, some people probably do like to have big differences between the grassroots or the the, the amateur game and the, and the pro game but there's a certain beauty to it that we're all playing the same game isn't there so you watch it on TV and yeah they're the elite versions of what we're trying to do but there's lots of mirrors between the two things we're all trying to do these tactics we try and formations we see it at the pro game and we try and mirror that at our lower level with varying success but it's part of the beauty of the game we love watching the game on TV and we kind of feel part of it because we play it so yeah, I think we're gonna we'll come on to that about how the pro game could use it and issues they might have. Before we do, um, and before going to positives, it seems right now to kind of talk about any solutions we have to the negatives we've just raised. So, for example, I've already mentioned the idea that the ref could stop the watch uh, for subs, um, and therefore you're not asking how many minutes are added on. It's just a case of we've not even got to the ninety minutes yet. Uh, we talked about the idea of, of the futsal approach. We, we personally don't think that would work. Um, what I've got here is that you could have you can only go um, if you're on the pitch come off you can go back on again one more time you can right. multiple times you could do that and it's the same yeah if you if you start sub and you come on and then come off again would there be a rule about the amount of back and forth you can do again for the referee that'd be tough but I suppose if you had every player's name and you know how many times you've been subbed off and by a tick it might help the ref as well because mm-hmm. I, I bet currently I've not seen anyone do this please let us know if anyone has had a you know a grassroots coach try and do like the same player on and off ten times, yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, maybe a rule on that would be good. And another similar to that would be a total limit on the amount of subs you use. Apparently, in in rugby league, there is um, elements of that where there's a rule on that. So you maybe could say you have ten subs total. So how you use that is up to you. Um, would they, would would those things you think help? Uh, yes, probably. I think we're talking again more. Uh, at the developmental level, I, I think it's probably not workable. The more com- the more you're involved in competition, it's probably not a workable thing. And I think the rules that we you'd be trying to put rules in place to make sure that there weren't bad faith actors 
at the development level, aren't you? Mm. So I, I'd say something like that. Some of those suggestions are probably interesting, but I think you just need to you'd need to make it very much the taboo for a coach to be acting in bad faith on yeah. these. It would it would have to be something quite serious, you know, whether it be you know something a fine against the club or it, ju- it would just need to be made very clear that these rules are there for the help uh, for the development of players and so that we can get as much football for as many players as possible Yeah. and if you are going to try and misuse those rules it- it'd have to be quite a-, a serious taboo I think yeah and-, and maybe that I suppose thinking on what you just said could be along the lines of you don't get you could have a certain amount of games that if you went against the eth- against the ethics of it your next match could be a suspension on rolling subs Yeah, you can only sense. use three in that game um, whereas if you don't abuse the rules you've got rolling subs all the time maybe up to a limit of 10 or 15 or whatever an amount so it doesn't go crazy I could see that working at the pro level when we come on to that you'd, you'd you know they've used to use their eighth sub now they've only got two left I can see they'd be able to quit, you know, on the screen it'd be clear you'd know right they can only use one more sub now it could be five not ten you know whatever it is but um Okay, well, let's, we went, we've looked at the negatives there because it's kind of nice to then go from there onto positives because, like I say, we have been, I've been on the other side of it where I thought this would never work for open age um, amateur men's team and then experienced it in a league and it surprised me and it changed my opinion to it where I actually quite like it now. Um, one of the things we've alluded to is more game time for more players. Um, it's not just the rolling subs list, by the way. This is about not having three subs, but having five subs. Because you're allowed five subs, you can only use three at the moment. So you often, do you only want to take five subs? We discuss, don't we, when we're picking yeah. our team? We try not to take five subs if we can only use three. It's only in crunch games where we say, right, the needs of the team are more important than the, the, yeah. the needs of that individual today. We need all five there. If we lose a winger in the game to an injury, we've got a winger. If we lose a strat and so on, you're covered for everything. But we try and keep three subs, so that means two lads for a lot of clubs aren't getting a game for us they go down to our reserve team and then two move down to the thirds and then yeah someone's missing out on a game time aren't they because we can't pick so I can see there big huge bonus first of all five subs that would be handy and then rotation of them Uh, anything on that how do you feel about that do you feel the same on that that it basically gives more game time makes our job easier yeah definitely I think uh, at all levels that feels like it's a a, a win-win it's a positive is that you can get more players, uh, as much football as you can possibly give them, um, more participation because we, as we know, in the open age game and in the uh, young in the youth games, we're looking to try and increase participation as much yep. as possible. Uh, and I think one of the huge things as coaches is it gives you that wonderful opportunity to do real time development. So if there's a problem going on in the match, you can you can pull someone out of that situation. Yep. You can speak to them. You can uh, coach them, tell them what they're doing right, tell them what they're doing wrong, and then they don't have to wait till next Saturday to put it right. You can go right, go out there and do, you know, improve your performance and change this and change that. And you can keep, it just gives you uh, far more opportunities for developing your players, doesn't it, during the match? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's, it helps you mo- maintain that motivation then, doesn't it, as well? Because, yeah, you could say to a winger, he's having a nightmare, he's on the far side of the pitch, I'm not getting my points across to him in the in the heat of the game, bring him off 10 minutes, have a chat, back on again. You know, that player's motivation doesn't sink as he gets subbed off. Because yeah. I think once that happens, I think it's human nature. If I've been subbed off because of my performance... Yes, the coach is talking to me, but am I listening fully? No, I'm too busy thinking I'm not getting to finish the game. I'm still het up. So the idea if I come off and if I listen to my coach, I might get back on. Yeah, You're going to have a much a big change in the body language, I would think. Uh, and equally, if I'm starting sub, but I know I could be on in the first five minutes or, or whatever in the first half, it's not a waste of a sub to do it early. My motivation's higher even as a sub now as well. Yeah, I think also it gives you that... that um feeling that you, you don't have to wait till the 45th or the 60th minute yeah. to get on the pitch so if you're a sub uh, tactically surely it wakes you up a little bit to be watching the game watching the opponents on the pitch a bit more because I think most people who've been a sub know that you're very unlikely to get on before half time it's, yeah. it's a real rarity that a coach makes a change so early in the match so in this instance if you can go on after 20 minutes because someone's not doing a job properly think that's that's interesting it probably probably heightens the the um tactical awareness of your subs bench doesn't it, it makes them yeah. all 
really focus in on what's going on in the game a bit more. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, because you'd be you could be going on any minute of the whole game. You'd, if you're not alert to the game, you might not be the sub that gets used. And and likewise, yeah, like you come off the pitch, stay focused on the game. Yeah, we've had lads who've taken them off before and they want to walk off the changing rooms. Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't happen now. They'd be aware they could come on, and that'd help you as a coach, even if you had no intention of bringing them back on again. You keep them engaged, I suppose. And you mentioned before about about being able to. Um, pass on tactical information so if as a coach it'd be great you could bring a player off have a chat get him back on if you wanted to equally you could have um, a player that's involved in a bit of a, a, a dispute and you could say let's get him off let's calm him down get him to cool his head off because if he, if he does carries on like this he's going to get booked sent off Yeah, that, you know if you did it at the right time you could probably quell so many future uh, flare ups on the pitch it could actually cause um, sorry stop a lot of problems you have uh, with players, you know, because even even a team that maybe are full of uh, aggressive players, they don't want them sent off. Yeah. So you might get subbed off. It might just calm things down at that that little part in the game. So I can see that definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's another good point. Yeah. Um, what I think I put down as well, it made me think being incentive as a starter as well. I mean, you should if you're starting. I presume you have a lot of motivation. You start a game well, and that's why you start the game. <laughs> But it would definitely have you on your toes if you thought, I haven't got 45 minutes here to warm myself into this game. Yeah. I'm going to have to do well because if not, coach might you know, hook me up after 10 minutes and I don't want to be that player that gets subbed after 10 minutes. So I think I would think general motivation for starters as well as subs would be, would be high output as well. Yeah, I think that's a fair point because I think most games when you start, if you're having a bad first 10, a bad first 15... Mm. You will generally, as a starter, think, "Well, I've got till half time. I've, yeah. got, I've got to sharpen up. But I've got, I, might have, I might have till half time, and then I'll probably get told off at half time, and then I've probably got another twenty minutes after, <laughs> yeah. after I've been told off." <laughs> but yeah, I think if if you can get hooked straight away, it probably gives you a, a big incentive to sharpen yourself up a bit quicker. Absolutely. Uh, one funny one that I'm not sure if you were there for this game. I think it was last season, and uh, one of our players, my brother, actually had uh, his wedding ring on. He did not. Oh, yeah. covered it up or he'd not taken it off before the game and uh, the referee noticed it and said right stop the game go and get your ring sorted out <laughs> Ben couldn't get it off his uh, <laughs> finger at the time I hadn't been playing as much at that, <laughs> that time and the ring was stuck in his finger we were playing with 10 men and it was like back and forth like what's going on Is he, got off? he can't get it off if we'd had rolling subs that would have been Wouldn't easy be problem, yeah. he could have gone off <laughs> got some grease on it and <laughs> whatever done some steps <laughs> to, to, to try and get the ring off but as it is we had to sort, you know, wait for 10, 10 minutes for 10 men or whatever it was 5 minutes and then we had to do a sub sadly and he lost his game yes it was a mistake on his part but I can see that kind of thing must happen up and down the country all yeah. the time at amateur level we just want to play football you've made a mistake equally you've got a bit of a not a full on injury you've got a bang on it and you, you know it'll be right in a few minutes, but your team can't play with 10 men, so you get subbed. Rolling subs, you could come off, you could have 20 minutes off, it could feel fine. Um, head injuries, you could assess them properly and not have to be with 10 men. And that player doesn't lose his game time because someone else banged into him. Yeah, I think player welfare-wise, that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. Because of, depending on what type of player you are, uh, a lot of players, if they've had a bang or if they've had a bad tackle, and it's you know, you'll run it off. It, that's how yeah. often do you hear that? Oh, I'll run it off. I'll run it off. Yeah, because you don't want to come off because it's the that's you know the finality of it is that's your game done for. If it was the situation where it's, I'll come off, I'll, have, I'll I'll just see what it's like for ten minutes, and then you can get me back on. Yeah, I think you probably would get a lot less people exacerbating injuries that they've they've got. And mm. as you say, with the head injuries, it's that's a big one as well where you wouldn't have you know your. Um, your battle hardened players who refuse to come off the pitch it'd be like no come off for five come off for ten we'll have a look at it and then yeah. we can get you back on you've not yeah. let anyone down you know you're not surrendering you can come off and we'll sort you out and you can get back on you're still brave <laughs> um, no that, that's that, that's that's really true so we can see there are loads of positives so we're thinking more grassroots and when we're saying grassroots as people in the open edge game we're including ourselves in that um as being like the, near the top of the amateur game and we're looking right the way down into under sevens and, and so on and how it could be really positive and well, we know a lot of those players already have this but like I say this is going to get introduced into more and more leagues it seems as you've got the age groups um, I heard a thing on the radio just the other day I think I'm sure it's Danny Murphy I heard on the radio and he said with England how the this was to do with really how you motivate your subs already and he said they weren't called subs they were called finishers Okay. Uh, was the way it got put to them so you're a starter or you're a finisher so as in you're going to finish the game and trying to get that out of your head that you're 
yeah, you're just there to replace someone else when needed, but you're there to finish the game off because certain players are good for finishing a game off. Right. Um, I suppose if you look at your, your super sub kind of players, um, for United it was always Solskjaer. You knew that kind of player would come on and he was a finisher and he kind of knew it himself. Uh, he became, he made it into an art where you'd be on the subs bench and he'd be away, weighing up where he'd come on and manipulate a game to his favour. Uh, would come on and do the business and they'd be sub again a week after so yeah. I can see this being another another way like that is a way, any way you can motivate somebody to motivate your squad and like you mentioned we, we want participation to be high and it's so difficult having to leave a player out uh, if you're a pro player you're still going to be there next week you're on a contract for us at grassroots level it's not like that you might put someone sub because they didn't quite make the bench uh, make the team sorry and they don't quite get on in that game and that player might lose faith and you lose the player if you had five subs, rolling subs, he would have got on that game and he could have done well and he's there next week. So I can really see that. And like I say, no one manipulated the gamesmanship thing for me in the first season I did it in that the other league we were in. In the league we're in now, uh, the reserve teams and third teams, uh, they have this rule of rolling subs and it seems to work well. I don't think Stokes has managed anything, has he? No, an issue. the games I've been down for the reserves as well, it's, the rules have been treated in good faith, I think. So, I mean, it makes me think it's possible. We we did have a vote for our league um, in the Manchester League. We had a vote on it, I think, last summer, and it was voted down for first teams. People wanted, like we said before, to mirror the pro game because the first teams are ultimately feeding the Northwest Counties. Uh, they're a step seven league, so it's, it is part of that structure. And so I, I kind of see you can't really have one rule for that. And maybe the rule, if you get promoted, the rule's changed, so, which probably leads us nicely onto then the pro game. Is there any differences here? If this was implemented in the pro game, yeah, I think there's there's huge differences in that the the incentive of good faith behaviour isn't there. That's not what that's not what you're you're hiring a manager for. Usually, you're hiring a manager to win games of football, and if there's any opportunity that you can uh, twist the rules to your advantage, you're almost obligated to do it. Really, I, I a lot of chairmen are not going to care about your moral objections if if this game's to be won so you can see a lot a lot of cynical managers would definitely be manipulating uh, any rule they can and it, I do think you would end up in the pro game where games could become farcical if it wasn't if it was introduced because I can't even see really ways of managing it and getting around it for the officials it, it just feels unmanageable at those top levels I think yeah you'd absolutely have to we talked about it before you'd have to have some kind of limit uh, and it could even be that just the rolling subs um, option cut off at, at the 80 minute mark I think I'm sure you've mentioned that before we've talked about it in the past that if it cut off at that point at least it's not going crazy in the last 10 minutes it'd be okay so rolling subs at that point after that point you can do whatever many I, I subs more the, the issue you get now is that teams who are wanting to slow the game down and they are wanting to break momentum they're not waiting to the 80th minute now mm, yeah. if you watch teams in the Premier League now that are that want to slow a game down and you're ending up where there's you know the ball's in play for 55 minutes now in a game 60 minutes because that is the keeper from the very first goal kick is slowing the game down yeah so if you if you got a positive you first five minutes you get a really quick start and you're really lively straight away it'd be right break this up slow this down get some subs on slow the game down so just it, it's difficult so this would be probably going back to them the idea that you'd ha if you had some kind of um, retrospective action on that and where it would be a privilege that you lose if you're deemed by a committee or something to be yeah going against the ethic of it just against the the goodwill of rolling subs would it be something like that I mean I, I saw some positives to it happen in the pro game which is well it's it's definitely a squad game now you, the the you have 20 to 24 man squad you need and that's before you get to youth players uh, so I suppose from keeping those players active it would be a good thing I know some of those players are probably happy not to be active and pick up their big paychecks but there must be a lot of players that aren't getting the game time particularly youngsters so if you all of a sudden have five subs can come on that would by definition give more game time to more players um, but yeah the way you manage it would be so difficult and I, I put with that as well the injured players I think I've mentioned this to you before if you get Ronaldo or Messi and it's a, a European final or a, an international final the sponsors the club the fans the worldwide audience don't want that player going off after 10 minutes he's got a dead leg 
I can yeah. see where that argument would be. We want the best players on the pitch as many minutes as we can. It's a spectacle. If he could have a rolling sub, he could go off and maybe makes it back on. Even the thought that he might come back on will keep people's interest in the game. It'd probably then become an advertising opportunity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rolling sub sponsored by Lucas Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that company again. They're, they're not currently sponsoring us. Uh, <laughs> we, we will keep saying them. I mean, uh, the one from you get with that as well is it's, it feels like it's a huge advantage for the the wealthy clubs again then doesn't it because they've got far more firepower on the bench they've yeah. got they've got 24 internationals whereas the teams a bit lower down the table probably haven't got that much money they can't afford the wages to have that amount of quality on the bench so it's probably one more thing that would advantage the wealthy mm. clubs the big clubs over the small clubs which you probably yeah. want to try and avoid at the um, moment Unless you go with like your American League ones and this new Canadian League I was reading and the German League, you know, the rule on uh, homegrown players, unless oh, yeah. you had three, you know, two of your subs used has to be a homegrown. I, t- I mean, we're getting deeper and deeper now, aren't we, into how many subs yeah. we used and was he homegrown and get your book out, let's check it out. But maybe, I mean, maybe there is something there for that. I mean, participation, I suppose. If we're talking about participation, that's not the key thing you're hearing, is it? They're getting to play football every day, it's their yeah. job. You know, that's, it's not something we, would feel too sorry for them if you're not getting too many games you can join another team you're a pro player maybe actually maybe when you go down to League 2 and it's your career and you're just about making the money to make a job think about those people as well I suppose it would give you more chances they're going to need a bigger roster of players aren't they with more subs so maybe more people get a job uh, with that get game time so maybe it would actually help that level but um, I put as well could it be a simulation deterrent we did simulation in the last one is there any way that when if you go down to be treated you have to go off you know at the moment you have to go off and come back on again would being subbed then so you're not losing out you bring a player and you've still got 11 men but because you went down and needed treatment would there be like a at least a thing there where the game doesn't get to wait for 10 minutes while someone gets the false treatment Possibly, but then the other side of it is is more incentive to kick someone. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah, if, they've got to go if they've got to go off and get subbed, then yeah. some, some very good players are going to be getting a lot more uh, bad tackles. No, that is very true. Um, so we've talked about quite a range of things there. I think the feeling I'm getting from our conversation is this could definitely work. It already works at junior level, and we can see why. We're seeing big benefits to it at our level, which yeah. is the um, open age uh, men's teams and women's teams. Uh, who are kind of just that level below going to semi-pro. We can see the benefits, but at the moment we've got a few issues with seeing how it work at the pro game. Definitely. Would that be fair enough? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I, I personally think it will happen eventually. I just think it's going that way. But yeah, how are they going to manage it? It'd be another thing, wouldn't it? Another issue. In terms of subs, I just wanted to kind of finish on as well uh, the idea of, of how you motivate your subs as a grassroots coach you know, beyond being able to have rolling subs. Is there anything you can do? Like I said before, do you call your subs finishes or you know replacements and not substitutes? So they don't get the stigma of that. Uh, have you got your subs on the line uh, monitoring the game and looking at who their uh, direct opposite player would be they're playing against? Are they working him out during the games so when they come on? They can impact and, and, and pick out weaknesses. Have you got any suggestions on that or things you think we've tried to do with our substitutes? I think it's incredibly difficult if you've just got the one side. If you haven't got a reserve team or you haven't got, we've got a third team as well, and we've got a lot of lads who come down. You know, we can we end up with sixty lads coming down sometimes at training, and you can move through teams. I think it's not so disappointing if if you're on the bench for the ones this week and you know, okay, but I'll get ninety minutes for the reserves next week. It's not so much of of a problem keeping people motivated. Yeah, I imagine it's incredibly difficult for a club where you've only got the one the first team and you've got your best 11 and you've got lads who aren't in yeah, that yeah. best 11 it's incredibly difficult then if you're if you are focusing on competition as well you're at a relatively decent level it's it's incredibly tricky because you're trying to pick your best side and if those three or four lads aren't in that best 11 or, or ladies aren't in that first 11 yeah it's hard it's incredibly hard to keep them motivated I imagine you, yeah you we can only rotate so right. much can't you I mean we, we like as Stu just said there we, we have a rule with Govan uh, which has worked well for us because we're, we're, we're looking up now to have three teams or oh, we've worked hard to get to three teams to yeah. be fair uh, and yeah if you are sub for the first team you're guaranteed as long as it's not an attitude problem um, that you're sub for or you did something terrible in the game if it's a case of you're sub the week after you're guaranteed if not a start for the first you get a start for the reserves and likewise the reserves into the thirds and it is something other clubs should maybe try um, because yeah it means that player knows it's very rare he'll be sub two weeks in a row 
but I know a lot of clubs we play against don't have any flow between their teams because yeah. so they have a, a first team squad of maybe 18 to 20 and yeah if you don't play you don't play and, and so on reserves and thirds and I understand why clubs do that too I can totally see why they do that they keep the same group of lads working together we do it a different way and it, it helps with subs but it must be very difficult for a lot of people which I suppose just to, to tie it all in rolling subs would help that a great deal end of the day being able to use five and not three would help but able to put your sub on and you find out he's not it's his debut and you put him on oh he's not up for this level or oh he's, he's, his knee's gone off you come again that thing of not having to risk being down to ten men because you do an early sub it would be a huge huge benefit I think yeah, uh, for coaches um, so would like to hear your opinions on that and, and just to kind of conclude if you've been listening to our podcast and we've got the audio blogs now uh, they're available on uh, the Edge of Play forums page which is going live very soon it should be by the time this podcast goes out actually uh, we'll share details of that we've got the Edge of Play website um, and the, they're also now available on Podbean and iTunes so you can download them uh, check them out put them on your phone listen to them on the train or whatever however you like to access these things would like you to, uh, to like uh, and subscribe if you can give us a good review if you like what you're hearing help us get it out to more people uh, and keep up to date with the next episodes and, and let us notify you when things are coming along we would like to add comments to this too so it's these are all things you might want to talk about you could do it via our forum via comments boxes on social media or via Podbean itself so do let us know your thoughts give us some feedback give us solutions you have do you think it'd be a good idea for all levels of the game rolling subs have you got any other suggestions for keeping your players motivated uh, uh, how you keep them warmed up how do you manage that those that have rolling subs already would love to know any final words Stuart? no I think it was uh, covered quite a lot of ground there didn't we? we did pretty well didn't we? Yeah. without the big man without James there as well so yeah we uh, look forward to coming to you with uh, podcast number four in the near future and uh, wish you all the best speak to you again soon see you next time